Good afternoon, guys. My name's Sandy. This is Sawing with Sandy. I'm standing out here as promised in front of my tiny house slash cabin. This right behind me, I built from trees right here on my property. I cut the trees down, I milled them, and obviously I built with them. This uh, tiny house slash cabin, as I call it, I built this about three years ago, and it's been standing ever since. When I built this, what I had envisioned was a spot way out in the woods where I could go in the middle of winter, middle of summer, anytime, and more or less put my feet up and relax with a nice sludge, as well as the, uh, the fireplace or the, uh, the wood stove. I also envisioned a spot where if I had guests come over to visit, they could come out here and get that full wilderness experience. I live in a beautiful area here and I like to have people have the same opportunity to experience it. And so I thought, why not a cabin way out in the woods like this? So I found this location because it was on a little bit of a hill and it overlooked a bit of a creek down here. And there's tons of wildlife right here, tons of nice big white pines you guys can see in there. So lots of wilderness stuff here. So I built it in this location for that reason. I also envisioned when I built it, um, something that would have a, a, a big opening, a, a big window on it. And I thought instead of having one big window and then a separate door, why not just make that window into the door with a sliding glass door? So that's what I did. That way when you're sitting down below, you can get a good view outside at, uh, at nature. And then you only have one opening. I also made it so that the opening is under an overhang so that you're not constantly clearing snow away from the door. Uh, especially in winter when you're trying to get in there. It also makes it so you can take your boots off and leave your outdoor gear outside on this covered area without having to track it inside. The overall design here, I didn't come up with this design um, with any type of plan. I actually just sort of looked online at the types of cabins I've seen before and ones that I thought would look good in this place. And this was the design I came up with. I wanted a loft for sleeping. I wanted some sort of a walkway along the edge with an overhang to protect it from the elements. Besides that, a little bit of a deck here just to sit out on, and that's what I came up with. So pretty proud of this, and hence why I'm going to show you it today, because I think in terms of the things I built, this is one of the things that I can look back on and really feel like I don't want to change a lot to it. So let's talk about the general platform that this tiny house is built on. So you guys can see here a series of long red pines right here. There's three of them. And each of these are flattened on both the top and the bottom side. And then they're supported with these posts. There's 12 posts in total, four per beam. Each of these posts are supported with all this bracing here to keep all these posts nice and plumb or straight up and down. Now, in a perfect world, I would have a nice concrete foundation. It would be four feet down uh, below the frost line so it wouldn't move at all. However, I'm way out in the woods. At the time of building this, I didn't feel like digging the holes. I didn't feel like filling it with concrete. And so what I did was I actually, uh, I just built it on concrete. I built it on concrete blocks. Now, when I did this, and you guys can see the blocks down here. When I did this, many folks said this building was gonna more or less move every year and I'd have problems. The truth of the matter is this building has not moved. I check it and I make sure that it's, uh, you know, as it should be all the time and, and nothing's moved at all. I think the reason for that is the soil is really well drained. And so there's not a lot of moisture that's accumulating and staying in that soil to expand and move the blocks. Also, it's a nice big hill here. And so any moisture that flows, it keeps flowing downhill and it doesn't stick around where the posts are. As I said, this is good in a perfect world. If I was building a house, obviously I would uh, get a concrete foundation because that's ideal. Just in this case, we're way out in the woods, just building a little cabin. I built it more or less as I'd, as I'd put a shed. So on top of that platform, what I did, I built a two by six floor that comprises the width and the length. Part of the floor has the building on it. The other part of the floor, which extends out this side, is the walkway. That same floor extends out the back where the, uh, where the deck more or less is. So that floor, it is, as I said, two by sixes. It's got insulation in between the floor joists. It also has OSB or press board underneath of it so that critters can't get up into the insulation under the floor. And if you guys have a look down here, <clears throat> you guys can see the press board up there, right? Obviously there's no press board right here or along the walkway right there just because there's no living space above it, so it's not gonna be heated. So on top of that floor, we have the actual building. The building is constructed out of 
two by four walls, 16 inch center studs. Now the, the studs themselves, they're true two by four inch material. In between those 16 inch studs, there is fiberglass insulation. That same fiberglass insulation is used throughout the building. Over top of that two by four wall on the exterior side, there's some plywood. Uh, I think it's half inch plywood. And then on top of that half inch plywood is the siding, which uh, is one inch thick all the way across. And I think it's a six inch board. It might be a seven inch board. But one inch by six or seven inches makes up the siding. Uh, this type of overlap here I call shiplap. Uh, it doesn't have a profile to it. Many boards like this would, in which this side is thick, up underneath there is thin. That's not the case here. This board is the same thickness all the way up, just overlap. And one more thing I forgot about, underneath that wood siding there is also house wrap or tieback, uh, which more or less encompasses the whole building, which is one more layer of protection from the elements. Just while we're here, we'll talk about the windows. These windows I got second hand, and I can't remember how many there is. I think there's two windows, uh, obviously right here. One window up in the loft, one window on both sides, and then the big sliding window. These used to be basement windows actually, hence why they have such a, uh, a wide profile to them. Uh, but that's what, I, that's what I got, that's what I used. They are vinyl, so they're not gonna rot on me. They're sliders, they also have the screens. And I just got creative in their placement and they turned out pretty good. So that's how those windows go. Uh, the sliding door was a bit of a challenge. I actually got that secondhand as well. And I think I paid a hundred bucks for it or might even have got it for free. The guy I got it from was renovating his house and uh, helped me out with that. So I got that put in, that was a big job. Uh, in terms of the sliding door, I think it's like six feet wide, if I'm not mistaken. I got pretty much as big as I could for the space in order to give the best view outside. So while we're here, we'll talk about the pitch. And if you guys look up here, the pitch on that roof is 12-12. Just behind the peak, you can also see the venting on the top of that peak, on the top of the ridge. If you guys can see that these are green asphalt shingles. Ideally, I would go with a green steel roof, but at the time, steel was very, very expensive for the roof. And so I went with this, which was a little bit cheaper. Uh, it turned out to work pretty well. The only downside you'll notice, you'll see the pine needles that collect. I just got up there not long ago and cleaned those off. And I usually get up there once a year to do that, just because if I don't, it'll hold moisture and you might get the growth of moss up there. It'll discolor the shingles. And so that's one of the downsides here, the asphalt shingles. Will I go with it again in the future after this needs replacement? I don't know, but for now, that's what it is. And so another thing with this roof here, as I mentioned before, uh, there is plywood underneath of these shingles. And then there's two by six framing for the rafters. In between the two by six framing, uh, there's actually insulation. And so this roof is fully insulated. In fact, the entire building is fully insulated, both floor, walls, roof, etc. So that in the middle of winter, when it's real cold out, I can get out here, get the wood stove going, and it stays nice and warm. And one more thing before we head inside, I know many people will ask me about the wood stove and heating this place. You guys get a look up there. That is the chimney, obviously, that's coming out the roof. Uh, so I have that flashing there that is for a 45 degree angle or for a 12-12 pitch. And then on top of it, I have my six inch chimney pipe. If you look way up top there, you guys can see my, my chimney, uh, chimney cap. Uh, one of the challenges with this building is getting up there to clean the chimney. And so I have had to be creative at this point. Um, what I've done at this point is basically just put a ladder up there and put a piece of foam down on the, on the uh, shingles. And then I can put a foot down on the shingles and not slip. And then I can just drop a weight and a brush down the chimney. But once again, when that gets cleaned, all the debris goes down the chimney and sits right on top of the wood stove. So uh, yeah, we'll see that when we go inside. Uh, I haven't installed any eaves troughs here just because we get a lot of debris from the trees. I don't wanna be up here cleaning it out all the time. All right, let's head on inside here. You guys can see, I just got these little stairs to get us up here. And recently I just put the railings on. You can check out that video if you wanted to see that. And up here, I can't remember the exact dimensions, how far it is, but it's just wide enough you can get up here. You know, you can sit there in the chair, you can take your boots off, take your coat off, whatever, uh, and then head, in, head on inside without taking all the snow, dirt, and everything else in there with you. So here we are up top, get a good look what you can see. Beautiful view out there, and that's one of the reasons I chose this location. Very, very quiet, and certainly, uh, certainly a great spot to be if you wanted to 
wanted to get out here and sort of put your feet up. Well guys, there we have it. There's the inside of the cabin, the tiny house. If you have a look around, lots of seating area, little table there. And then if we look out this way again, you can see where we just came from. Nice big sliding door provides tons of light in here. Now, when we first walk in on the right, you're gonna notice these two switches. These switches are hooked up to a 12 volt battery, which typically, although I removed it recently, typically sits right about there. That 12 volt battery is hooked up to this charging module, which if you were looking outside a moment ago, you would have seen a solar panel. That solar panel to that charging module keeps the 12 volt battery charged up. So when you come in here to relax, you can just hit these light switches and then the lights come on. Two different light switches. One is for the lights down below. Another one is for the lights up top. That way, if you want to go up top, you can hit that up top light and not have to uh, worry about climbing up there in the dark in order to fish around for the switch. Now looking down below here, some other things you're going to see. First off is the wood stove. This wood stove is way too big for this building. This is an old Elmira cook stove. This is, I think, designed for about 900 square feet. So this is way too big. Uh, however, this is what I have and this is what I used. If I decide to change it in the future, I still have an area for a wood stove and that's where it'll end up. Some other things you guys will notice here. See that chimney? That is exterior chimney pipe and many people in the past have asked me, why do you have exterior chimney pipe inside? The fact of the matter is the price was right when I bought it. I got this entire run of chimney pipe for next to nothing. And so that saved me some dough because then I didn't have to go and buy the inside chimney pipe or the double walled stuff. And I didn't have to buy, if you look up at the ceiling, nope, up there, you guys see up there? I didn't have to buy the connection. There's often a connection right at the ceiling, which more or less takes you through the roof from the exterior pipe outside to the interior pipe. I didn't need that in this case. So instead I have exterior pipe that runs right from the wood stove, right through the roof, right to the chimney cap. And so some other things you're going to notice here inside is that seat where I like to sit and put my sludge right in front of the fire. Uh, just to the right of it, you see this little sofa. This right here actually came out of a trailer, a travel trailer. This is a sofa bed as well, so you can roll it out and then you've got two additional sleeping spaces. Um, and then obviously you have that table over here and you've got this one right here. This table right here, it's actually a white pine slab from the, uh, from the property here. So that provides a little bit of extra storage. Right here, you guys can see these stairs. So these stairs take you up, up top to the loft. These are some nice maple stairs. Uh, I didn't build them. I did alter them a little bit to make them shorter, but I didn't build them. If we look up top here, you're gonna see that steel rail. That steel rail allows these stairs to move out of the way. So they'll actually move right over here, right over here. And that way you don't always have to have them right where you're right where you're sitting and down at the bottom there's some casters and that allows that to happen and so before we go up in the loft let's just talk about the interior finishes here so what we have on the walls is one inch thick material by i think it's four inches wide so this one by fours is what makes up the entire interior now you'll notice some of them actually have these holes in them see these uh, discolored holes this wood was actually red pine that I let sit on the ground too long. Bugs got into it, but I said, what the heck? Let's just keep milling it. I kept milling it and it gave this really neat effect. People will probably ask, do these bugs go away? They do. So after I let this wood dry, the bugs completely left it and there's no more bugs. But what you see behind is a really neat, really neat effect. Gives it that rugged look. And if we look around the whole interior here, that sort of carried on throughout the throughout the wall boards. I really like it. In between the cracks in the wall board, you'll probably see a black color. That black color is actually tar paper, which is stapled to the wall studs. Now in behind the tar paper is vapor barrier. This entire building has vapor barrier on it. That way I don't get any issues with moisture. And so we've got the wall studs vapor barrier, tar paper, and then the wall boards. And as I said, these are one by fours. These are all nailed right to the studs. And looking down below here, you guys will see similar boards on the floor. These are identical to the wall boards. These are one inch by four inch material. 
Uh, these also have the holes in them. Underneath of that is three quarter inch plywood. Three quarter inch plywood is over top of the floor joists. Uh, I also have vapor barrier underneath that plywood in between the floor joists and the actual plywood. And as I said before, that helps to uh, maintain the conditions inside and uh, alleviate any, any type of moisture problems. If we make our way up the ladder here, we can get a general idea what the framing's like for this uh, loft area. So this area here, it's actually two by sixes, which run from the top of this wall to the top of that wall. And it goes all the way out for an overhang. And then on top of that, I have plywood. And then on top of that, obviously, I have the, uh, the bed and everything else. So making our way up here, here's the loft. And this right here is actually a queen mattress. So tons of, uh, tons of room up here. I wanted to make sure that it didn't get claustrophobic. And so what I did was I put a little window up here. That way, when you get up here, there's a nice, there's a nice, um, a nice uh, view outside and lots of light. And this, this uh, window here, it's also, you can open it and there's a screen so you can get lots of airflow in the summertime. And in the winter, if it gets too hot up here, you just open this and uh, obviously you cool yourself off. So if I'm sitting here, <clears throat> if I'm sitting here, you guys can get an idea how much headroom there is, right? So you still got headroom here. You're not feeling like you're being closed in too much. You also got to remember the only time you're up here is to sleep. So I wanted to maximize headroom down below. Now up here as well, we also have lights. You guys can see the lights all the way along the ridge. And <clears throat> because I was thinking about what it would be like to get up here and forget to turn the light switch off, I actually put another light switch which controls all the lights right up here. And so that light switch, if you guys have a look down, right down here, see that switch there? That'll turn off all the lights so that when you get up here and you want to shut her down for the night, you just hit that switch. Another neat thing that I did, you guys can see I'm still sitting on the bed right uh, ready to go down the ladder. I put a window so that when you're lying in bed, so if you can imagine your head's probably at right about that height, you can actually see outside there right out that top window. And I did that on purpose because I, you know, you wake up, you've been out in the cabin, you're getting a nice rest. You want to be able to look outside and you can look out in all directions, both the front and the back. Down below here, you guys can see there's my favorite chair. There's the wood stove and uh, tons of light down there. You're up high enough. You feel like you're uh, getting lots of headroom down below as well. Really neat view from up here. And just making our way back down here, you can see that railing I just mentioned to allow the, uh, the top of the stairs here to slide over. All right, and down below, as I said, the ceiling height is very high. I think to the underside of that is eight feet. Uh, actually, I know it's eight feet. And so it gives you the feeling of lots of space down here. Not to mention, I wanted to have it open right here all the way to the ridge so that when you're sitting out here, you get the feeling of space, even though the footprint is really small. And you guys can see with the ladder pushed out of the way, there's even more open area here. But the truth of the matter is, if there's one thing I could do differently, it might be to make those stairs hinge so that they could go right up out of the way so that the entire floor area is open. Does that mean that's going to be something I do in the future? Maybe. For now, I think we'll leave it just as it is. So guys, that's my tiny house or cabin build. And I got to tell you, I'm very proud of this. I went from nothing more than trees harvested them, milled them on my sawmill, and built what you see before you. So I'm very proud of this. As I said, anytime someone comes over to visit, I'm always happy to send them out this way to get the full wilderness experience. If you guys would like to see this build from start to finish, we're talking from dirt right to what you see, be sure to check out the playlist at the end of this video. I'd say it's a pretty good one. This build didn't happen overnight. It took me months and months and months. You guys can see all the ups and downs and, well, exactly how this came to be. That's it for me here today, guys. I appreciate you watching. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done so already, and I'll see you next time.